Okay, so now in order to build the cross section first, we're gonna to have to import the cross section tool. So if we go to our arc toolbox, I like to pin it to the side here. If we open this up and we right click, we're gonna add a toolbox. So this thing, if we go to home, is gonna be underneath downloads, cross section master, toolbox here. We open this, here's the toolbox here. So we're gonna open up our toolbox and we notice that there's three different steps in cross section tools 10.0. First thing we do, step one, create segmented surface profile. So what this is gonna do is build the topographic profile from your DEM. So we're gonna use this cross section A line. It's already drawn in for you guys. DEM, we're gonna to wanna to select this one here, DSM clip one meter. Notice that our line is kind of going from southwest to northeast. So we want to make sure that we specify we start from the southwest. That's the beginning of the cross section line. The polygon layer is going to be your map unit polys. Output feature class, I like to write in here topographic profile. And then data frame, we wanna add this to cross section layers here. So notice we have two data frames. We're gonna add this new data to the cross section. So we hit okay, let the thing run. Okay, so now look, we've built this topographic profile from sort of the west to the east. Um, it's not looking too, fantastic just yet. Um, sometimes this cross-section tool gets a little buggy. If you notice stuff like this happening, to fix it, just go to your geologic map, hit activate, it'll bring you back to your map. So there's one more thing we wanna do with this topographic profile. We wanna go into the uh, symbology under properties, and we actually wanna go categories. And if we do map unit here, and we add values, okay? So here's the four different map units. Unfortunately, the symbology isn't really translating, but notice here we've got the different colors for the different map units. Um, if you wanna match these up individually, that's okay, you can do that. So this is gonna be Pioneer. So we switch that, now it's brown. This green one is actually supposed to be dripping springs. Now it's orange. This seven, this is gonna be diabase, pink shown in here. Um, number four we had was the mescal. And number two was our escabrosa. Okay. Oh, so this one is actually supposed to be diabase. And then this one is our Mescal, the way that I've mapped it. Okay, so now uh, we can see the contacts between the different units. Uh, so one other thing you can do with this um, cross-section tool is project your strikes and dips onto that profile. So if we go back to the toolbox, we're actually gonna skip number two. We're just gonna go to number three, map points to cross-section points. So if we open this up, we've got some things to fill in. Cross-section line again is gonna be cross-section A. The DEM is still the same, it's DSM clip one meter. Again, we're gonna go from the Southwest. The points layer we wanna draw from are the points. So these are the strikes and dips that we inputted from Strabospot. The azimuth field we want to specify as dip direction and the dip field is gonna be dip. So then search distance. So notice I have a bunch of strike and dips in the south, some in the north, um, and they're not really any close to our line. So what we wanna do in search distance is actually increase it to say 500 meters. So this will grab strike and dips that are within 500 meters from the cross section line. So again, um, feature class, I like to call this um, dips. Uh, and then we're going to add it to the cross section data frame again. Oh, 
FIPS projected. Okay. All right, then we let that run. Okay, so now um, some people call these tadpoles. These are the strikes and dips from your map with the angles um, associated with them. So we can use these to help build your cross section now. So we know where our geologic contacts are and we know what the relative dips are. Oh, you can see that I froze. So we're gonna go back into cross section, hit activate. And what we can do now is turn on the editor and what we can do is like some of these strikes and dips aren't very useful. So what you can do is you can grab them, delete them. This one maybe is a little too steep. We're going to delete that. But this one looks pretty representative for the dripping springs and the pioneer. So what we can do is move this tadpole to the contact line. We know that that's how it's going to project into the subsurface now. These ones as well look pretty good. All right, so in this uh, cross-section data frame, we still have all of our editing functionality as well. So what we'll do is we'll draw in a contact for the pioneer and the dripping springs, and we can sort of project down at the angle based on this tadpole that we created. So then I'm gonna finish the sketch there. And similar like to what we did with the map polygons, we can actually select lines here. Oh, so this one, we're gonna have to make a little split right here. And then let's see, oh, we'll have to make another little cut here with the split tool. And then what we can do is grab all of these line segments, use the construct polygon, and we're gonna call this the, yeah, the pioneer. Okay, and then just to be safe, we'll increase this to one. Okay, so notice that it's labeled it as QG. In order to fix that, we go to attributes. See if we go to QG, this should actually be YP. There we go, that looks better. So then we can do the same thing here. Maybe we take this strike and dip. <laughs> this one we'll say is representative of our contacts with this diabase and the mezcal. So what we can do again is just sort of draw in our contact line here, down to here, finish sketch. And then here we can draw a similar dip, finish sketch. And again, we can just fill in our polygons. Make sure we're just grabbing the lines. So this one is going to be dripping springs. Switch that to one. There we go. And then here we can fill in this. As diabase. So we might have to make some cuts here. Split there. Can make a split here. And then that should allow us to make the polygon. So maybe let's do five meters. Okay, we might notice that the sort of boundary here to the cross section is a little larger than our segment. Um, so what we can do is just select this and 
what we can do is just cut it, say down here, delete, we can delete this line. And if we just draw in a contact here, make it a vertical line. It's not drawn in perfectly, but that's how you can edit sort of the boundary to the cross section. And then it looks like we just need to finish up drawing. Let's take this guy and put him here. Looks like the dip is getting shallower. So we have another contact here that goes like this. And if we finish that sketch, we should be able to fill in the last of our polygons here. Make another cut there. We'll grab these segments. And I called this on my map, the mescal. And we'll just do this to be safe. Something's not lining up. Okay, so see, here's the problem. Uh, so if we just go click on this line and then we can go edit vertices, we can actually drag it there. That will be better. And then you hit finish sketch. And now we should be able to finish the polygon. Just increase the tolerance to the one meter. There we go. The scale, and then our last segment here, which I had mapped as Escabrosa. And we'll just try, oops, increasing the tolerance on this one. There you have it. So this is sort of a completed cross section done in ArcMap. And just for cleanliness sakes, I say it's good to get rid of these extra tadpoles that are helpful for drawing the changing dips, but they don't necessarily look the greatest. So we just delete all of those. Awesome, we have a completed cross section. And then now when we go to our layout view, Maybe I should surf, save my edits first. Yes. And then if we go to our map layer, and now if we do layout view, hey, we've got our finished map and our cross section.